right, so I'm going to share a strategy for controlling jumping worms that I've found to be effective. Um, so on a lot of the agricultural like extension bulletins um, on jumping worms, you'll find that they mention saponins as a viable control for jumping worms. Um, unfortunately, it's really hard to find a source for it. Um, so I'll put a link down below uh, where you can find it. So uh, it comes in the, this crushed tea seed meal that you can see here. It's a byproduct of um, uh, seed oil extraction in China. Um, and this is what it looks like, these pellets. Um, so online, uh, I found um, application instructions to just spread these pellets at six pounds per thousand square feet on top of the soil <clears throat> and then water it in um, it says like up to an inch that might work on golf courses where it's super sandy soil but it had no effect in a garden where there's a high level of organic matter and it just seems to get like tied up in the mulch or whatever you have on the soil surface and it doesn't have any effect uh, i just learned recently that you can mix uh, this stuff with water and create a soak um, and so I have no idea the right mixing rates or anything like that but I found that uh, even low concentrations of just reusing the same um, crushed tea seed meal and mix it with water fresh again it seems to be effective so I've mixed up about 10 pounds of this stuff in a little over 75 gallons of water to start with and uh, we'll show you how it works here. All right, so I'm just for, just to show you, I'll put it in a watering can. Um, but I have a pump uh, connected to this thing and I'm gonna water the whole garden with just a regular garden hose. So this is a part of just a garden bed with a lot of wood chips mixed in. Um, and we're just gonna water this in. And you do really have to soak it in. It has to be more than just a little drizzle on top. It's gotta get wet and it's gotta get through the top surface because the worms are within the top three inches or so. So as you can see, the watering can gets clogged because the pellets don't fully dissolve but they do break down quite a bit. So now we'll just wait a few minutes and see what happens. While we're waiting for that to do its thing, here's an area, I just did this little square. You can see here's a worm. Um, here are a couple that have come up to the surface. And I think the mechanism for how it works is it either like irritates their mucous membranes or it might affect their breathing. Uh, it's not really clear. But as you can see, they're on the surface now and they're not really going anywhere. And in the heat of the day, they'll just dry out and die. Um, so I believe over here, there's a couple on the surface that have already died. Let's see if we can find them. Yep, here's another one that's up on the surface. Oh, yeah, look at that. There are a few that have died. And here's one that's not looking so good. All right, so this is the section that we just watered the sap and then soak in. And you can see here's one on the surface already. Um, and yep, look, here's another one that's coming up. Oh, and here's a, here's a juvenile one that just came up as well. You can see it's not looking so good. Um, and let's see. Oh, so here's, here's one, and you can see they're not really slithering that vigorously or doing their typical writhing thing. Um, and look, there's another one that just came up huge one back here and that one will die soon too we hope so we're looking at like 
mature or at least maturing jumping worms, but there are jumping worms in all stages of like the hatching and juvenile um, stages. And I've found that it seems to be very effective on the really small kind of juvenile ones. Um, <clears throat> so after you pour it and you move whatever material away or you start digging a little bit, you'll see um, they're hard to see, they're really small, but you'll, you'll often see that they, they're not looking so 